Hello friends, welcome again to the Tetrahedron Chemistry classes. So, uh, in my second lecture of uh, uh, infrared spectroscopy, I am going to discuss few more concepts of your infrared spectroscopy, which will include number of modes of the vibrations, how to calculate the formula, we will derive this, right, and we will then see how, uh, what kinds of the vibrations are there, how we can visualize them, all these things, but before going uh, further, I want to take a quick recap what we have learned so far. So, I am going back. So, if you have seen my first lecture, then in my first lecture, I already explained you the uh, concept of the infrared spectroscopy where I have discussed <coughs> why we study the infrared spectroscopy. Okay? And after that, I have explained you the conditions uh, required for the generation of the vibrational spectrum that is your IR spectrum. Right, this I have already explained you, and then I have discussed uh, the molecules, which kinds of the molecules would be IR active, which kinds are not. Okay, and after that, I have discussed the simple harmonic oscillator model for diatomic molecules, and I have derived an equation. And <coughs> using this, your uh, Schrodinger wave equation, I have derived uh, the not derived actually, I have uh, quickly jumped to that equation, which is nothing but your. Uh, potential energy for the vibration. Okay, so this equation actually I uh, I have already given you, and uh, in today's class uh, I am going to uh, move further. So if you if you can recall, uh, this was uh, my equation, right? This this is E V equals to new bar, which is your wave number V plus half in centimeter inverse. This, it, this is actually the uh, energy of the system actually. And this V is the vibrational quantum number, and I have put it this V equals to 0, and then I got this equation epsilon 0 equals to nu bar of half, which is where 0 point energy, and this is the main difference between uh, the classical uh, approach to the uh, classical approach of the simple harmonic oscillator and then your wave mechanics approach. This was the difference. Now, what we can do. See, I already told you whenever you are actually learning any kind of the spectroscopic technique, the important thing is the quantization of energy, right? Quantization of energy is very, very important. And I have already explained you, see if I go back this particular slide, okay? In this particular slide, you can see I have already explained you the frequency of the emitted or the absorbed radiation must satisfy the Bohr condition and Bohr condition was del E equals to H nu. And you know, we can easily convert this uh, your nu into the nu bar. So, I have converted this in delta E into the nu bar, right? And so, whether you use this one or this one, this is the Bohr's condition. So, today that means, and I have already um, explained you, whenever you actually <coughs> increase the energy of the system, what will happen? Only the vibrational, uh, see vibration frequency increases, but vibrational energy remains the same, which actually follows the uh, your Bohr's condition, right? So, today I am going to move further. So, my equation was just like that, epsilon v equals to nu bar within the bracket v plus half, right? And it is in the centimeter inverse and I have actually, they give you the uh, value of the zero point energy in my last slide, what I can do. Now, I can put v equals to 1. If I put v equals to 1, so this would become epsilon 1 equals to nu bar 1 plus 1 by 2, right? That is nothing but nu bar of 3 by 2, right? So, first excited state is having the energy which would be your 3 by 2 of your wave number, which this is very, very important. Now, if I change this value from v1 to v2, then I will get my epsilon 2, my epsilon 2 would be nu bar. Now, I will put 2 instead of your v, that is the vibrational quantum number and half is already there, this will give you nu bar of 5 by 2, there is no problem in that. And if I put nu equals to 3, then I will get my nu 3 equals to 
mu bar 3 plus 1 by 3 that will give you mu bar of 7 by 2 and if I keep on doing that means if I keep on putting the different values of the V then I can have various kinds of the energies right and we can plot this energy against the bond length or the internuclear distance. So, how I can plot this right say this is my graph okay and this is my internuclear distance internuclear distance okay and I will have my parabola kind of the thing just like that okay and then what I can do I can put this here and here my vibrational quantum number is 0. So, corresponding to this I will have one energy here and that energy would be half of nu bar ok this I have already told you and if I put my vibrational quantum number value 1 then I will have here 3 by 2 of nu bar my second energy and similarly my energy would be 5 by 2 of nu bar if I put nu equal uh, sorry v equals to 3 and then what I can do I can put v equals to 4 and when I put the v equals to 4 I am having my energy 7 by 2 of nu bar and similarly if I put v equals to 5 then I will have energy 9 by 2 of nu bar and if I keep on doing this if I put v equals to 6 then my energy would be 11 by 2 of nu bar right and again if I put v equals to 7 okay and then my energy would be 13 by 2 and if I put v equals to 8 then it my energy would be 15 by 2 of nu bar I forgot to put the nu bar here and similarly if I put v equals to 9 then my energy would be 7 by 17 by uh, 2 of the nu bar right and in all the cases when I uh, do this right and of course uh, you will remember this is my energy okay and that energy is in centimeter inverse okay and now see this is actually a zero point energy and you can see this transition right from 0 to 1. So, there there is energy gap. So, what is the energy gap here? Energy gap is nothing but it is your only nu bar or you can see h nu. How I can actually derive this one? See uh, your final is final is your v1. So, instead of v1 you can write 3 by 2 of nu bar right minus your initial was 0 that means uh, this value half of nu bar if you take the difference then you will get the nu bar that means the energy difference is nu bar only and if you go from say v1 to v3 okay I actually uh, made a little mistake here guys and uh, mistake was just like that uh, see this was one very sorry uh, for this ok now I can correct it 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 ok so 8 is corresponding to the 17 by 2 sorry I made a mistake here so this is the difference this difference is actually new now, if you want to take the difference uh, between these two, right, or you can see the 1 and 2, right, then again the difference, see, if you take the difference of this, this will give you the new bar. If you take the difference of these two, this will again give you the new bar. And if you take the difference of these two, again it will give you the new bar. So, any kind of the transition, right, which is having here, which is uh, actually, I, which I am showing here, okay all will have the energy difference of the nu bar 
right this is actually the quantization of energy and this i already told you whenever you increase the energy of the system only the vibrational frequency increases just like that say here at zero point your energy is actually see your vibrational frequency is low if you increase the energy vibrational frequency is high if you further increase the energy vibrational frequency is, is again high if you are keep on doing this if you keep on doing this then at the top you are having the very large vibrational frequency but the energy for the remains same it is actually equals to the nu bar or your h nu which i already explained to you and of course uh, you should remember this thing here is actually your normal bond length okay this is your normal bond length which is your uh, r equilibrium you can see so this concept is very very important and uh, you can call it as quantization of energy quantization of energy so guys what is the meaning of that the, the meaning is quite simple and it is very important also if you keep uh, if you if, if we keep putting vibrational quantum number up to infinity right then what will happen we will have the infinite number of uh, these vibrational frequencies that mean my uh, uh, my uh, uh, vibrational frequency will increase okay and nothing is going to happen right then in the simple harmonic motion right but you know when you supply a enormous amount of the energy enormous amount means the uh, energy which is actually greater than the bond dissociation energy say if you if you have supplied the energy which is actually equal to the bond dissociation energy what will happen your uh, your vibrational will not be there and your bond will break but this model of simple harmonic oscillator is not suggesting this it is only simply saying that if you if you give the large energy only the vibrational frequency will increase and it is not saying that your molecule is going to break down but in actual practice you all know definitely when you supply the very high amount of the energy your bond will break that mean this kind of harmony will not continue and we will need some another concept actually uh, to explain the real conditions not your this harmonic condition so in this harmonic condition we have to add another concept which is your n harmonicity and that n harmonicity will give will give you the concept of the bond dissociation energy and then you will be able to apply this concept uh, to the more number of the molecules right i hope this is clear to you so later on i'll discuss the concept of the n harmonicity but for right now you can understand this diagram and the quantization of energy okay now i am going to discuss uh, next thing so here uh, you can see i am writing here uh, modes of vibration modes of vibrations that mean uh, when whenever you are having any kind of the molecule right especially your uh, organic molecule right it is vibrating uh, if you keep the molecule even at the uh, absolute zero right even at the absolute zero the molecule will have the sufficient amount of energy so that they can vibrate so uh, if you if you take the example of uh, hypothetical example of uh, this triatomic system which is ax2 okay and uh, uh, how many kinds of the vibrations would be there so basically whenever you have this ax2 kind of the thing so you will have two kinds of the vibration guys two kinds of the vibration you will have so guys you can see uh, some noise you uh, you are actually listening every now and then and this noise is uh, basically uh, the noise of uh, the fan of the laptop okay i am trying to avoid this right and i am trying to eliminate this but it is not possible so kindly adjust please eh? so uh, this uh, first is your say stretching vibration first is your stretching vibration i can write like that and then you are having your bending vibration then you are having your bending vibrations okay see what is the meaning of the stretching vibrations uh, say for example uh, you are having atom 1 and you are having atom 2 and you are stretching this is spring so what will happen the bond length will increase okay and what you can do squeeze the bond also you can compress the bond also the so bond length decreases so in stretching vibrations only bond length changes bond length changes right and say so if you are having the system 
say this is a x2 kind of the system because bending vibration is not possible for the diatomic molecule so but actually representation is not possible right so this is x this is x right and what will happen when this molecule will bend like that right so what will happen this is a and this is say x and x so this bond angle actually changes so in the bending vibrations bond angle changes bond angle changes and in the textbook you can find the bond axis also right instead of your bond angle the book actually generally write the bond axis so whatever change is there whether your stretching is changing that means the bond length is changing bond length is changing or your bond ending is uh, bond uh, angle is changing in both the cases dipole moment of the molecule changes and when the dipole moment of the molecule changes your molecule is ir active okay so how many kinds of the vibrations are there so uh, i can give you another insight for this say first is your asymmetric stretch and then your uh, symmetric stretch so here what i can do i can write uh, my symmetric stretch symmetric not not double m very sorry so i am writing symmetric stretch here here i am writing asymmetric stretch. asymmetric or anti symmetric okay and you can you can call it as anti symmetric also anti symmetric stretch i, I am giving i am taking the same example so what what can happen say this is my atom a okay and this is connected with the x and again this is connected with the x okay so right now you can understand in that manner only and just after few minutes after after the completion of the this particular slide i'll show you the cartoon model which would be more helpful to visualize the things so whenever i am saying uh, my actually uh, vibration my stretch is the symmetric what will happen both the ax bond will go in the same direction just like that in the same direction so you can see here my both the arrow this a this ax bond length it is increasing and this ax bond length it is also increasing right but it is uh, since it is vibrating so this increasing bond length is always not there and after that your bond length will decrease also and this can come here this can come here but you can see here both the bonds actually simultaneously either stretching or either compressing okay so this is your symmetric stretch so in the textbook you can find this actually right and sometimes you can put the plus sign and plus sign over there also right so you can visit and uh, see uh, in a few minute few minutes later you will see uh, uh, how we can actually visualize the things with the help of the cartoon diagram now if you go for the asymmetric stretch now this is my a okay and this is my x this is my another x okay now since this is the asymmetric stretch so what is going to happen here this bond length will increase and this bond length will decrease okay and you can go for the vice versa this will decrease or this will increase so in that case this is asymmetric stretch why it is asymmetric stretch because one uh, one bond length is increasing at the same time another bond length is decreasing if the first one is increasing then second one would decrease second one will decrease if first one is decreasing then the second one will increase so this is your asymmetric vibration and you see the bond length is actually changing in that case okay so this bond length actually is affected in case of the stretching vibrations now i can go for the bending vibrations so my bending vibrations are again of uh, the two kinds so first i am writing here in plane bending vibration i am writing in plane bending vibration and here i can write out of plane bending vibration so i am writing out of plane and again you can see my in plane bending vibration can be of two types what they are actually first say is scissoring scissoring that mean see you all have used scissor actually right so the movement of the arms of the scissor actually is similar to the in plane uh bending vibration right and then you are having the rocking vibration you can take the example of the rocking chair so what is happened in that case okay my seizing vibration is just like that say for example i am having my atom a here and this is my x and this is my x and this was my a 
so since it is in plane bending you know when you actually uh, when you when you move when, when you have your caesar right and if you uh, if you move the arms of the caesar so both the arms will coming simultaneously together and they can go away from the uh, from each other so this is in plane uh, bending vibration and in that case you have uh, what will happen your uh, this uh, uh, bond angle will change so in the seizing you can see here uh, if i uh, use arrow for this one arm of the one arm of the caesar this is second arm of the caesar they are coming closer right and uh, not coming closer see first time they can come closer if you move in the other direction so simultaneously they can go away from each other but all these things you can see here they are happening in the same plane when they are happening in the same plane so it's a caesaring vibration which is in plane bending vibration okay now uh, you can go for the rocking vibration how we can take the example of the rocking vibration say this is my a uh, this is my x and this is my another x so i have right i have written just like that okay so uh, what will happen in the rocking chair uh, if you if you move your rocking chair then both of your hands will go in the same direction either on the right hand side if you are moving on the right hand side or on the left hand side if you are moving on the left hand side okay so this is your rocking vibrations and later uh, you will see with the help of the models also now you can go for the out of plane uh, bending uh, vibration so out of for out of plane bending vibration i am using my next page uh, because this page is not having that much of a space so uh, out of plane i can write oop out of plane bending vibrations okay and these out of plane bending vibrations are again of two kinds say first is your twisting you know the twisting dance form that uh, what is taken from there only and then you are waking vibration which is nothing but the movement of the dog's tail say this is your a, a this is your x and this is your another x this is x this is x this is a and since it is out of plane out of plane that mean with respect to the plane of the board on which i am writing right now so what will happen this can actually come up this can go down but in the uh, in the two dimension it is not possible to actually show this thing that's why i will use uh, in a few minute few moment later the model uh, the cartoon model for this okay but uh, how we can represent it actually right if you are taking the twisting twisting is the out of plane kind of the thing so in the twisting say this i am showing with the plus sign and this i am showing with the minus sign minus sign actually is going below the plane minus sign is actually going below the plane your plus sign is coming out of the plane okay this is out of the plane that's why it is twisting but you can switch uh, them or uh, switch, switch them so uh, if 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 it is positive right here you can see here if it is positive in one instant and it is negative in one instant then in the another instant what will happen they will change how they will change this will become negative this will become positive that mean this will go below the plane and this will come above the plane so this is the twisting kind of the vibration this is very very important now again you can see here this is my a and these two my x connected with the a so i can write a here and here i'll put plus sign over there i'll put plus sign over there that mean both are coming out of the plane both are coming out of the plane or you can put negative on both negative on both means they are going below the plane they are going below the plane so these are the fundamental vibration which gives the fundamental bands in the ir spectrum you can uh, you can learn these things but i know this is uh, this is not easy to understand in the two dimension however i tried to give you the better picture okay but uh, uh, before going see before moving further i i'm telling you one thing your stretching vibration will always require higher energy 
then your bending vibration okay please remember if if you are a gym lover and you are doing uh, you are actually using a bull worker there is a see in the classical uh, bodybuilding uh, there was a equipment right it still still uh, these equipment uh, generally are there right this is known as the bull worker right if you if you see the bull worker if you try to stretch that uh, bull worker then it will require more energy right and if you bend uh, if you try to bend it it will require less energy so you can take this analogy of uh, bull worker with the help of the stretching and the bending vibrations so that's why stretching vibrations require always high energy than the bending vibration now we can see with the help of the uh, with the help of the model or cartoon diagram how we can understand these stretching and the bending vibrations you can see the cartoon diagrams of them because these diagrams will give you the more clear picture how to actually understand these symmetric and asymmetric vibrations because visualization would be very very easy if you go through the cartoon diagram so you can see here you can follow my cursor okay so these are the stretching vibration as i already told you in the stretching vibration bond length generally increases or decreases so there are two kinds of the as i have already explained to you there are two kinds of the uh, stretching vibration symmetric which is on the left hand side and asymmetric which uh, which is on the right hand side as you can see if you focus on this diagram you can focus my cursor guys here so both the blue balls simultaneously going in the same direction either the bond length is increasing in the uh, say, increasing or the decreasing that means the movement of the balls you can consider these two balls as x1 and x2 right and uh, this uh, yellow ball is your a so basically it is a x2 type of the system and in this a x2 type of the system you can see the blue balls which are generally your x right they are simultaneously either going to the either increasing the bond length or decreasing the bond length that mean both the motions are very very symmetric that mean this this is actually your symmetric stretch now if you move on the right hand side right hand side you can see guys this is asymmetric stretch as i have already explained to you now you can see here one one bond length is increasing that means one ax is increasing and another ax is decreasing right and this is going just like that right like you are uh, it is just like that you actually have raised your hand and you are punching in the air just like that one by one so this is asymmetric stretch one bond length is increasing and another bond length is decreasing okay now uh, the bending vibrations as i already told you in the bending vibration nothing is going to happen with the bond length but your bond axis which is known as the bond angle it will change and bending vibrations are again are of two kinds first is the in plane bending and second is the out of plane bending so first of all you can see on the left hand side the in the in plane bending the first vibration is the scissor ring see you uh, you all guys actually are familiar with the scissor right if you have, when you actually cut the paper or you cut you cut the cloth you use the scissor and when you actually uh, move uh, the both arms of the scissor they actually simultaneously go back or come together so it basically it is in plane bending and you can see here in the cartoon diagram both the x they are coming together uh, to each other actually and they are going away from each other and it is just the motion of the arms of the scissor and it is happening in one plane right it is happening in the one plane as you can see both are in the your one plane you can consider this plane as any plane right now you can understand they are in the x plane so it is just like that then you can see the out of plane bending basically uh, two kinds of the in plane and two kinds of the out of plane bending are there so first uh, in plane bending is the scissoring and out of plane bending is your twisting see twisting is what it is out of plane bending uh, it is just like the uh, dance form twist dance form you have you must have uh, listen or seen that particular that particular song on the television or in any show like our twist karein okay this was the uh, famous uh, bollywood song so it is the kind of the twisting so you can see here one bond is going below the plane below the plane one atom that is x is going below the plane one is coming out of the plane and they are actually doing this alternatively one is going up then other one is going down when uh, the next one is coming up then other one is going down this is happening just like that because they are changing their plane because whenever i am saying that it is going up and down up and down means with respect to the plane that means it is out of plane bending 
so please remember in plane bending is the scissoring and out of plane bending is the twisting now i am going to move another in plane bending vibration uh, right so this is uh, another you can see the dance form this is in plane bending rocking is again your in plane bending and again you can see you, you must have seen the rocking chair when you sit on the rocking chair and you try to uh, revolve your chair or rock your chair so both your arms will go in the one direction if you are moving that uh, chair uh, in the say left hand side so both your right hand and left hand will move in the left hand direction and when you move your chair on the right hand side then both your hands left and right they will move in the right hand direction and this is exactly happening in that case you can see here both the balls are going to your left to your left side left side uh, on the one hand and you can see then they are coming back on the right hand side so it is a kind of the rocking chair and after that you left with the waging vibration or the waging vibration it is just the example of the out of plane bending vibration it is just like the uh, see whenever see if you if you have a dog in your home right okay, your pet dog in your home and when uh, after actually spending your whole day outside your home when you came, when you come back to your home then your dog will be very very happy and it will wag its tail so basically this waging vibration is the motion of the dog's tail so both the atoms are coming out of the plane simultaneously or going below the plane simultaneously this is the waging vibration now to summarize your Uh, in plane bending are of two kind first is scissoring second is rocking out of plane bending is again of two kinds right first is your uh, first uh, you can you can go back right uh, first is your twisting and second is your waving vibration and i already told you bending vibration requires lesser energy than the stretching vibration that mean if your ch bending is there carbon hydrogen bending stretch sorry ch uh, carbon hydrogen stretching is there and it is uh, say roughly taking uh, 2900 cm inverse of wave number right it is giving the band at this position then its bending vibration will give you the absorption band roughly half of this 2900 that is somewhere around 1450 cm inverse so i hope this visualization through the cartoon diagrams of your various kinds of the stretching and bending would be more beneficial see why i have actually shown you these diagrams because in the examination you 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 will not have this facility of uh, uh, showing uh, showing or drawing the cartoon diagram on the with the help of the pen and the paper right so you should remember that plus and minus sign notation as i have already explained you in my Uh, previous slides or in, instead of the plus minus sign sometimes books use arrows right all these things so i hope this is clear to you now i am moving uh, to give you uh, uh, another uh, very important concept of ir spectroscopy which is nothing but the fundamental vibrational degrees of freedom calculation of fundamental degrees of vibration of freedom now i am going to discuss the mechanism of the interaction between the vibrating molecules now since you have already learned a um, lot of things about the vibrations so now you can imagine here if your molecule is uh, there and you shine ir light onto this particular molecule so it will vibrate right it can vibrate right and vibrate can be your asymmetric your symmetric or your bending whatever okay now how actually the uh, generation of the ir spectrum takes place how we can generate the ir spectrum we can see here see during the vibration of the molecule any kind of the vibration guys please it is it, it uh, please remember it could be your bending it could be your uh, stretching vibration during the vibration of the molecule if there occurs a, occurs a change in the dipole moment definitely uh, your ir active molecules are those molecule which will have either permanent dipole moment or if they are not having the permanent dipole moment some of their vibrations right whether your asymmetric stretch or your bending vibration they can generate the dipole moment they can induce the dipole moment right so during the vibration of a molecule if there occurs a change of uh, in the dipole moment it will lead to the generation of an oscillating electric field so that dipole moment right since it is taking place so this will uh, this will generate the oscillating electric field so for the chemistry people this is 
uh, enough to uh, enough to learn that whenever your dipole moment is changing during the vibration it will generate the oscillating electric field now you are shining the ir light you are throwing the ir light onto the sample what will happen if the frequency of these oscill this oscillating electric field generated by the change in the dipole moment becomes equal to the frequency of the fluctuating electric field of the ir radiation which you are passing on to the sample only then the resonance will occur resonance means the transfer of the energy when their frequency matches actually right so whenever the frequency of the ir radiation matches with the frequency of the oscillating electric field then the energy from the ir radiation will go to the uh, uh, molecule right and molecule will uh, change its vibrational energy level right and hence and uh, that's why and hence energy can be transferred from the radiation to the molecule or vice versa right but we are more interested in this concept that since we are recording the absorption spectra my radiation is passing from the ir radiation to the molecule right and this will change the uh, vibrational quantum number and this will lead to the generation of the absorption ir spectra right and since i am not uh, actually saying that uh, my molecule is falling back so i am not interested in the emission spectra but it can but um, uh, we may have the emission spectra also so this is the mechanism of resonance in the vibrational spectroscopy i hope this is clear to you right and see all these vibrations basically are the fundamental vibrations right and basically they are the uh, harmonically allowed uh, transitions okay but sometimes you may have the hot bands and uh, say your uh, overtones your combination band your difference band right we will see uh, later on the concept of these right but right now i am going further derivation of number of number of vibrational degrees of freedom guys this is very very important in your textbook you will find only the formula but you don't know the concept actually generally if you are the if you are beginner and you are learning uh, uh, you, you have recently started started learning the ir spectroscopy on the various concept then it would be very very important for you to understand the things actually so guys in the background you can see the lots of the noise because i am shooting this video or this video lecture in my home so lots of noise are there please be aware of this okay so uh, uh, please uh, adjust this okay uh, now how we can derive this so for example first of all i am saying that the my molecules if my molecule right molecule could be diatomic molecule could be triatomic right so molecules containing right i can write molecules containing atoms my molecule is having say atom n i am i am using the capital n it could be 2 it could be 3 it could be 4 anything okay and then uh, how many kinds of the uh, degrees of freedom would be there for any atom please remember right this is very very important so i am writing degrees of freedom of an atom so there are total 3 degrees of freedom for the atoms right uh, what what are the names first is the translational degrees of freedom and second you may have your rotational degrees of freedom and after rotational degrees of freedom you may have your vibrational degrees of freedom vibrational degrees of freedom so there are three kinds of the degrees of freedom for the atom translation motion means your molecule is simply moving in one direction right it could move in the x direction it could move in the y direction or it could move in the z direction so total translational degrees of freedom are basically 3 see this 3 is basically the total degrees of freedom for translational vibrational and rotational and translation motions can be of three types it can move in the x coordinate it can move in the y coordinate it can move in the z coordinate and on the same ground your rotational degrees of freedom could be 3 also right but out of this three rotational degrees of freedom only two are important why two are important see first of all what i can do i can write my rotational degrees of freedom here the rotational degrees of freedom of an atom they are or they are three actually but out of out of three only two are important two are important this point is very very important why the third one is not important if you have seen my lecture on the microwave spectroscopy then I have explained you when your molecule is rotating 
if your molecule is rotating along its own axis, then it will require almost no energy. When no energy is involved, so we can ignore that particular rotation. That's why, see, only two degrees of freedoms are important instead of three. Right? This is something very, very important. Okay? And I already told you my translational degrees of freedom. Translational degrees of freedom, they are equals to three. So, total how many I am having? So, I can circle them all. See, 3, very important, translational and only 2, rotational and 3 are uh, translational all already, already 3, right? So, if you, if you want to calculate the total number of degrees of freedom, then you can use this formula to get the result, okay? So, uh, for this I am writing TDF total degrees of freedom right this is my own way of writing right you can use by uh, you can use your own so uh, total degrees of freedom will include your translational your rotational and uh, your vibrational okay so total degrees of freedom you know if you if you have uh, uh, if you, if your molecule is having n atom so you can write n here and for a for an atom total three degrees of freedoms are there so you can write 3n this is something very very important you should you should remember this particular point okay this is something very very important for a molecule containing n atoms total degrees of freedoms are 3n okay please remember here translational degrees of freedom 3 and your rotational degrees of freedom 2 and then your v so, if you solve this, then V equals to 3n minus 5, right? So, this is your vibrational degrees of freedom. So, inst uh, instead of uh, writing uh, V, what uh, we can do? We can write VDF. You can write VDF. That means vibrational degrees of freedom. So, if you want to calculate, right? If you want to see, this is for linear molecule. Please remember. This is for linear molecules like your HCl, okay. This is for linear molecule and your carbon dioxide is also linear for carbon dioxide also, okay. So, for linear molecules, your rotational degrees of freedom, uh, your translation, your vibrational degrees of freedom is having the formula of 3n minus 5 and how I have derived this? because molecule is having the n atom, degrees of freedom 3, translational, rotational and vibrational. So, total number of degrees of freedom would be your 3n, TDF which is 3n, translational 3, molecule can move in any of the coordinate x, y or z, right. Rotational are 3 but only 2 are important because one of them, that means if your molecule is rotating through its own axis, it will require very less energy. When it will require very less energy, we can ignore this. So, total rotational degrees of freedom 2 and translational are 3. So, and total degrees of freedom equals, equals to the sum of translational, rotational and the vibrational. So, translational 3, rotational 2, V, you are getting this one for linear molecule. In the same way, right, if your molecule is non-linear, Please remember, say what I can do here, I can use next page. I can use next page if your molecule is non-linear, if molecule is non-linear. So, for non-linear molecule, guys, please remember your rotational or DC, uh, your rotational degrees of freedom, RDF, generally they are 3. But in case of the linear molecule, I have ignored 1. But in non-linear cases, we'll, we cannot ignore on. Uh, we can we cannot ignore the third rotational degrees of freedom. So total degrees of freedom would be equals to rotational, translational plus vibrational. Rotational total degrees of freedom you know three n. Rotational now I am taking three because in that case we cannot ignore right. If your molecule is non-linear, so and and it is rotating, then it will always require. Uh, in any kind of the rotation, it will it will always require energy. So total three rotational degrees of freedoms are there. Translations are three, and then v. So v equals to three n minus six, right? Or more clearly, VDF vibrational degrees of freedom equals to three n minus six. This is for the non-linear molecule. This you have to remember, and it is very very important. I hope this is clear to you. 
okay now i am going to discuss a few problems that is calculation of the vibrational degrees of freedom uh, for the different kinds of the molecules and later on uh, see why i actually am at uh, i am going to solve a few problems based on this because i after that i am uh, going to explain a very important concept of the ir spectroscopy that's why it is very very important and here i am taking the uh, few examples uh, of here uh, btech first year curriculum that mean this uh, this question actually has been asked in the btech first year uh, btech first year or uh, you may have this kind of the questions in your any of your competitive examinations okay so here i am writing say so for example i want to calculate the total degrees of freedom for the molecules my first molecule say is carbon dioxide okay i know my carbon dioxide is the linear molecule you know uh, this is oxygen this is double bond carbon this is double bond oxygen and you know uh, though it is uh, this carbon dioxide is not active not ir active but its asymmetric stretch or the bending vibration can induce the dipole moment and that fluctuating uh, uh, dipole moment uh, will give you the uh, ir spectrum that means it is ir active and since it is the linear molecule and i want to calculate uh, the number of deg vibrational degrees of freedom for this one you know the formula vdf vibrational degrees of freedom that is equals to 3n minus 5 okay 3 is there and it is having atom 1 atom 2 and atom 3 total 3 atoms are there so 3 into 3 minus 5 that will give you the 4 four fundamental modes of the vibrations would be there for the uh, your uh, carbon dioxide molecule and uh, by inspecting or by analyzing the IR spectrum of carbon dioxide, you can assign which one is symmetric, is, uh, which one is a stretching vibration, which one is the bending vibration, right. You can easily uh, analyze all the, on these things and later I will discuss all these things in the detail when I will go, uh, when I will explain uh, the interpretation of the IR spectra in my subsequent lectures, okay. So, this problem actually has been asked in uh, your UTU examination. Uh, 2023 2023 utu examination uttarakhand technical university examination okay now my second problem uh, my second problem is i am having sulfur dioxide okay my sulfur dioxide guys it is very very important this thing is very very important see this is co2 and this is your SO2, if you apply the same concept, that means if you apply the same formula, if you use the same formula to cal calculate the vibrational degrees of freedom for sulphur dioxide, then you will end up with the wrong answer, right. Why? Because you need to know the structure of the sulphur dioxide. So, in the Vesper theory, in my one of the lecture of the Vesper theory way back, uh, say one, one year back or the two year back, I have explained you this thing. Sulphur dioxide is having the bent structure lone pair is there and this is sulfur dioxide right if you if you if you have followed my lecture on the vesper if you are if you haven't follow my lecture on the vesper theory you can uh, you can uh, uh, you can type in the search bar of the youtube uh, vesper theory by tetrahedron chemistry classes then you will get the result and you will uh, you will learn the, the things from there and the bond angle 109 degree here actually right and this will change okay and uh, for this uh, bond length was i think it was 1.43 angstrom i hope just like that okay however this bond length and bond angle are not very important for you but you should remember this is v shaped structure what kind of the structure it is it is v shaped structure just like water and this question is also asked in the utu examination in the 2000 okay so uh, in that case since the molecule is done uh, is not linear it is not linear that mean your formula of vibrational degrees of freedom would be 3 n minus 6 okay and this will give you 3 into 3 minus 6 equals to 3 so three fundamental vibrations would be there for this one okay this is something very very important for you now what can happen what you can do you can take another example say 3 i am having my ch4 okay and this question is again uh, i think it is 
also asked in the UTU 2023 examination. If I am not wrong, you can go through the. If you are, if you are BTEC first year student from Uttarakhand Technical University, you can go through the last semester's paper. Okay, right. So uh, this, uh, how we can calculate this one, right? So this is actually the tetrahedral structure. This methane is the tetrahedral structure. Okay, and uh, you know there is a little difference. See uh, uh, difference between the electronegativity of the carbon and hydrogen. So CH stretching is always there. Since it is the tetrahedral structure, I can write TD. That means it is non-linear. When the structure is non-linear, that means you will use the formula 3n minus 6 to calculate the vibrational degrees of freedom. So that will give you 3 into 5. Why 5? 4 hydrogens, 1 carbon, minus 6, 3 5s are 15, 15 minus 6 equals to 9. So, total 9 modes of vibrations, fundamental vibrations will be there, okay. And then your next molecule, next molecule is say number 4 and that molecule is say C2H2, ethylene is given and again this question is from UTU2023 examination, okay. So, here you can write H, 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 this is the structure. And you know this structure is linear since this and you know this there is difference between the electronegativities of the carbon and hydrogen. So, very less polarity is there. Uh, see, this is sp hybridized, right? This is sp, this is sp hybridized. So, due to this sp hybridization, this is highly electronegative, okay? Uh, so, that is why this bond is the polar. When the bond is the polar, it is IR active, the molecule is the IR active. So, you can write the vibrational, you can calculate the vibrational degrees of freedom and here you will use the formula 3 and minus 5 because the molecule is linear in nature. So, this will give you 3 into 4 because 2 carbon, 2 hydrogens are there minus 5, right? And then you will have the 7 modes of the vibration, 7 fundamental mode of the vibration. So, these are the questions which have been asked in the previous year of UTU examinations or previous semester of the UTU examination. But I can give you uh, two more examples because these uh, the coming two examples uh, will give you uh, a better idea actually, right? Better idea of the concept which I am going to explain in a few moments later. If you have the C60 molecule, right? C60 is your what? Buck ministers fullerene and it is the it is having the structure of the soccer ball, it is Buckminster Fullerene and it is non-linear, it is non-linear, okay. And if you want to calculate the vibrational degrees of freedom for this one, so since it is non-linear, you can write 3 and minus 6, so 3 into 60 guys and minus 6, that means 174. So total modes of the vibration would be 174. This is something very, very important. Now, moving to the last example, you can you can practice lots of example by your own. My last example is say uh, number 6, I think. Benzene, C6H6, okay. And you know the benzene is having the shape or the structure, hexagonal structure, right? Planar structure. Planar but not linear, guys. There is a difference between planar and linear. This will give you 3n minus 6 since the structure is not linear, so you will use the 6. So, 3 into 12 minus 6, that means this will give you 30 modes of the vibration. And you know for C60, you are getting 174. This is very, very important. Now, imagine the condition or the situation. If you are having these much or these uh, large number of the uh, uh, bands in the IR spectrum, then your IR spectrum would be too complicated and it is not, it will not be very easy. Um, actually, it will be impossible for you to interpret such kind of the spectrum. So, the question is that, how? what is the solution for this one? The solution is quite simple, you see guys here. So, guys, answer is here. Why uh, we, uh, we will not having or generally we do not have uh, 174 band for C60 molecule in the IR spectrum or 30 uh, fundamental band for the benzene molecule, answer is here, right? 
you see here theoretical number of fundamental vibrations are seldom observed that means it is not necessary that whenever whatever you have calculated with the help of the formula 3n minus 6 or 3n minus 5 see that uh, that number of these these much higher number of uh, vib uh, vibration would not be there in case of here um, in your ir spectrum so as we can see in uh, case not in KR actually this is the error from my side as we can see in case of the C60 and the C6S6 molecule vibrational degrees of freedom are 174 and 30 if this really happens IR spectrometer is recording the same number of the bands in the IR spectra then my spectra are too complicated for sure but this will never going to happen for the following regions so these are the regions See, some of the fundamental vibrations are too weak. Weak vibration means their absorptions would be quite low. And absorption, if the absorption of the IR spectra, if the absorption is quite low, so uh, we cannot observe them. So, uh, right now, if you, are, if you are a beginner and you don't understand uh, how to read the IR spectrum, so I am giving you the idea. Say this is just like that. Here in that case, your centimeter inverse, your wave number. And here is the absorption or the intensity, right? So, uh, say you are having say, this kind of the IR spectra. Uh, this is your strong absorption and this is also your strong absorption. But you, if, you, if you see this one, this is weak absorption and this one is also weak absorption, okay? So, don't worry if you don't know this, the, uh, don't know these things. So, right now you can understand only these things. Later on when I will... Uh, discuss the interpretation of the IR spectra, then I will explain actually why the some bonds are actually, uh, why, why some absorption bands are very strong, why some are few are weak. I will discuss all these things, but right now you can understand uh, this one, right, because the, I have plotted the absorption in that case, okay. So, if your fundamental vibration is too weak, right, so what, what is going to happen in that case? Uh, they, they, may not, they may not be detected in the IR spectrum. When they are not detected in the IR spectrum, obviously the number would be low in that case say for example if uh, uh, if uh, for c60 molecule for your c6s6 molecules uh, you are expecting to have the 30 but out of 30 uh, say uh, say 4 are weak very weak so what you left with only 26 okay and a second thing what can happen certain fundamental vibration falls outside the region under investigation See, if you have followed my lecture properly, you know I am I have given you the detail. The range of the middle IR uh, region is here for, from 4000 to 667 centimeter inverse. If your vibration is somewhere around 680 centimeter inverse or say 4100 centimeter inverse, so this area is not under investigation and if you are fundamental vibration falling outside this region, they cannot be detected. So, for example, from 34 were weak, you are, you, you, uh, you, uh, then you will get uh, only 26 and out of this 4, say for example, this is just for example, okay, 5 are outside the region, outside the IR region. So, you left with 21 and after that, there are the degenerate vibration. Degenerate vibration means vibrations having the same energy that mean same energy means uh, same wave number same wave number say uh, say for example one is just like the red one and another one is also following just like that so if they are on the same side they, they are giving on the same side they, they that mean they are overlapping so they are two but you will count them one so degenerate vibrations are overlapping vibrations and if they are the overlapping say suppose two are overlapping so, you left with the 21 minus 2, now you left with the 19, okay. And after that, required change in the dipole moment may not be achieved. Since, uh, but uh, see, it, is, it, it does not matter whether with the help of the formula uh, of vibrational degrees of freedom, whatever you have calculated, if the required change in the dipole moment may not achieve during that uh, vibration, so those vibrations can also be neglected, okay. That is why, the total number of fundamental vibrations which you generally calculate for the non-linear kinds of the molecules, bigger molecules, they don't actually appear in the IR spectrum due to these four regions. Okay? 
so okay and if you are watching the video for the first time you are understanding the things completely okay then please subscribe the tetra don chemistry classes channel do share with your friends right and uh, don't forget to like the video